You're back? For, for more sculpture content? <laughs> and you want me to... Well, buckle up, partner, because guess what? We're going uncut, unfiltered. This is how we do it here, so get ready. So listen, I heard your screams, I heard your cries, I heard you whining like petulant children, asking for more direct feedback on these grinders. You wanted comparisons between all of the Eureka line set. You wanted comparisons with all the DFs, the 64, the, the 83. You wanted comparisons with the niche grinder, the Malkunag X54. You wanted stuff about the Barazza Forte, Varia. You wanted the Barazza Sette, the Encore, the Fellow Opus, the Fellow Ode. You wanted all the hand grinders, the Kinus, the Easy Pressos, the Comandantes. You wanted so many comparisons, and I, I get it. This is a this is a this is probably the most hyped release I have seen since being in coffee. Wow. Now, when I made my first video, linked right here, I highly suggest you watch that before this cuz this will have a lot less context if you haven't seen that. But if you've seen that video, you'll see that I presented a ton of more objective no uh, knowledge on these on these grinders, what I found through my testing, and I tried to equip you all with the tools in order to deduce for yourselves which grinder might be right for you, or even if one was right for you. Now, before I filmed my last video, I hadn't watched any of the plethora of reviews that had already come out on these grinders, but what I did know, what was made painfully obvious to me, is how hyped they were, how much positive praise they were getting from everyone else, which is great, that's awesome. But it has caused this massive wave of FOMO of uh, potential buyer's remorse. If, for instance, they're buying this to buy something cheaper than what they currently have, hoping that they can, you know, make a little cash back on a sale and they'll have something just as good. You have, there's been so many scenarios I've seen on Reddit, on Espresso Aficionado Discord, on Home Barista, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere. It's been, to put it shortly, chaotic. Okay, so my video today, I am doing this all in one take. There's gonna be no cuts, there's gonna be none of that stuff. We're just gonna go through because I wanna be unfiltered. And this time, instead of being safe, instead of just giving you what's objective, I'm gonna do what you've been asking, which is to just tell me my thought, tell you my thoughts. Okay, now I always get pushback whenever I do this because people are like, oh no, give me your objective findings. Wait, where's the data? Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? Well, I gave you one like that, and guess what? I got crap for it. So we are gonna do this. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna jump in. We have the 64 Turbo, the 64 Espresso, the 78 Turbo, the 78 Espresso. Now we're gonna start with the 64s, all right? So we're gonna take a look. Okay, so let's just, let's imagine you have one of the following grinders. You've got a Eureka, any of them. Or I'm just gonna say any of them. You have a Eureka, you have a Barazza Varia, where you've put the, the, the steel chamber in it with steel burrs, you have the Forte, you have a Barazza Sette, you have, um, you know, something along those lines where it's a, a good good reputation, good build quality, solid build quality at a, at a you know, price range of 400 to like $800. And you're going, oh, should I sell that and get this? Is that, how, how much of an upgrade is that going to be? Or is it going to be an upgrade? Or it is going to be an upgrade because all the hype. Well, let me just tell you, the espresso is not going to be much of an upgrade in terms of taste. Um, the, what it might be an upgrade in is workflow. I, I, I would actually argue it will be an upgrade in workflow. I prefer the workflow of this over something like the Niche or the Eurekas or these other things. It's it's single dose, it's got the small hopper up here, you put it through, it's auger fed to vertical burst, and then you have what I love, which is the Fines Collector. This little thing is honestly like my favorite part of the whole machine. Um, and it has variable RPM, but you know, you don't need that. I'm gonna be honest with you, you don't need it. People are gonna argue with me, but guess what? I don't care. So. This is not going to be necessarily an upgrade. It's going to be around a lateral move. If anything, it might go up a little bit depending on which grinder you have. It could even go down a little bit depending on which grinder you have, depending on your situation. How do you enjoy your workflow on your grinder? How do you enjoy your coffee on your grinder? This is not going to come out and just blow you away. Like, wow, I'm drinking coffee from a $2,000 style grinder with incredible t tolerances, with incredible alignment, with incredible burrs, blah, 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 blah. No, it does a good job. It gives you something between traditional and modern style espresso and it does you know it does what it's got to do it can hold 64 millimeter bursts if you're wanting something for that capability well you do have it in this so if you pledged it and you've never had an electric grinder 
you're gonna love it, especially if you got it at that early bird price. That genuinely is an insane price, okay? If you got it at the Kickstarter price, the normal one, that's a great price, you should be very happy. This at retail is great, it's good, it's good. It's one of those though that like, I think people who get a DF64 might be just as happy if they don't mind the workflow quirks of the DF64. But if you have a Eureka grinder, you're going a step down in quality of build, in, prop, in my opinion. I think the Eurekas are built incredibly robustly and they have years and years and years and years and years of proof behind their build. This is still super new. No, no creator out there, including myself, has been able to have it nearly long enough in order to speak to it. Now, have I put uh, more than 10 kilograms in each of these, and at this point, more than 20 through each of these? Yes, but that's not nearly enough to say anything about longevity. We're talking thousands of kilos. We're talking about runtime for multiple hours that I've just not been able to do in eight, nine, 10 weeks. So this is a good grinder. I would, personally, I'm taking this, if, if, you, if you're looking between like, I know people are saying, whoa, oh, should I not, should, is 64 the S or the niche? I'm taking this personally over the niche. I prefer the workflow of it. I prefer the coffee out of it. But I know a lot of you might prefer the coffee out of the niche, or you might prefer the workflow of the niche. I, I, I don't for sure. But I think that this gives me, um, it gives me a coffee that's more interesting than what a niche gives me. A niche kind of gives me flatter coffees, but it, it's one of the easiest grinders to dial in. The niche has a massive wide range of where you can dial in and it tastes fine. I would say you kind of top out on a niche around 60 to 70% of the coffee's full potential. I think on this, you can top out much closer to like 90 or something. Not that it's easy. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny little sliver of hope where you get there. So it's much more difficult to dial this in, especially because it has a smaller range. All right. So that's kind of my idea on this. Is it going to substantially give you better coffee than a Barazza Sete? No, it's not going to. Substantially better than the Eureka series? No. It'll give you more acidity, but it won't give you a substantially better coffee. Will it give you better coffee than this? If, if you put HU burrs in this and HU burrs in a DF64, no, they're going to be roughly roughly the same. They're going to be roughly the same. The, the majority of you won't tell any difference. Now, that it's it's that simple. It's it's a great price for that at Kickstarter. Retail is a solid price. It, it does fine. And you know, I would recommend it buying at the retail price. But it's not this shaking the ground, change everything, like second coming of something. It's it's not that, okay? Uh, this is legitimately uh, uncut. I just had a little bit of sweat rolling down because it's hot outside and we're gonna keep it in. We're gonna keep going. The 64 Turbo, it does a solid job at filter. It does better than most, I think, in the price range at filter only. But uh, to be honest, with you, like, it's like, if, if you have a fellow ode, you have essentially the same thing as this, except this does have variable RPM and better workflow. I would not ditch my fellow ode to get this because how much money are you going to recoup on the fellow ode? in order to buy this. Like you're probably gonna be at a loss and I don't think it's worth it necessarily unless the, you know, 50 or 100 bucks isn't isn't much to you and you, per, you would rather spend 50 to 100 in differential in order to get the workflow of this, then it would be worth it. Uh, but this with the Turbo Burrs, they do fine, they do a good job. They, um, on, on occasion, they would beat the SSP multi-purpose Burrs. Um, uh, in the fellow ode, but I would say the majority of the time the SSPs were still winning. That being said, you can put them in this, but then again, that's going to take this price up another 200 bucks for those burrs. So like take that into account when you're buying this. I see a lot of people saying, I'm going to buy it and immediately outfit it with SSP. Or I've seen people talk about the 78 and go, maybe Hansung at SSP will make uh, burrs for these. Those at 78 mils are going to be $350 burrs. So you're effectively over a thousand dollars already. When you could look, you could be buying a Zerno around that price that come with SSPs, I believe or they come with Mazda or something, but with a $100 upgrade, you can get the SSPs and a much better build, and in my opinion, a better grinder. So. That's that's kind of my thoughts here. When we're looking at hand grinders, this is going to give you similar quality to something like, um, I would say something like the K Plus or the Commandante. This would probably have a little more clarity, uh, where the others would have a little bit more probably sweetness, um, but which it, it, neither one's better than the other. That's all up to you what you're looking for in a cup of coffee. I found that this sometimes produces a bit hollow brews in comparison to other grinders that give a more robust flavor profile, but that's, that's what you're getting with it. And again, variable RPM, better workflow, but but uh, this is not a proven build. It is a 180 watt uh, brushless DC motor, which is a great motor. But other other grinders have brushless DCs. The the fellow Ode has one. It's 140 watts, so it's not that much weaker than this. Okay, so let me wipe a little bit there. 
All right, so that's kind of my thoughts here. All right, so we're gonna kind of move on because I'm hoping that that answers enough. Uh, well, I guess I should do a couple more quick comparisons. The Vario, I would honestly, if you had a hyperlined Vario or a Forte, uh, I'm thinking that that with the steel burrs is going to rival, I prefer this espresso actually out of those to this, just barely. I think the majority of you won't really tell much of a difference. This of course has the capability of switching out the 64 millimeter burrs. So if that's something you're looking to do, then I understand that switch. The X54 is kind of similar to those. I always put the Didding burrs from the Forte into the X54. Uh, the build quality is solid on it. Um, this one takes up a lot less. I just like the look of this better and the workflow of this better and the dialing of this better. So I would choose this over it, but that doesn't mean sell your X54 and buy this. Uh, again, that's one of those like maybe lateral move, maybe a little bit up because of preferences on workflow and aesthetic. Um, but that's kind of the idea there. I, these are not some sort of revolutionary, this has changed the game forever type of situation. These are really fair priced grinders. I'm excited that something's coming out in this range that is fairly priced. Something that's just a little bit over something like an Ode that actually has the capability of doing espresso. You might need to be, uh, finesse it a bit with really light roast, maybe slower feed, but for the most part, I don't find stalling on this unless you're going super fine, like blooming blooming shots with something like Nomad or Pond's Gold or uh, Moon trap or something like that. Um, other than that, these, 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 they're great grinders. They do a great job uh, and you'll be happy if you backed it, especially the cheaper price you got, the better it is. Um, but yeah, th I just don't want you to think that they're some sort of like Messiah Kingdom Come kind of thing. Okay, we move over to the 78s. The, I, I, I have said this, I feel like I've been very clear about it. By and far, the best thing that Time Warp released is this 078. Now, in my original 078 video right here, I referred to it as a niche killer, saying there's no way they can mess up the burst for espresso badly enough for this to not be a niche killer. And I stand by that. So I do think that this does beat the niche in, in taste. I think if you put dark roasted coffees in here, it'll have a better body because of the way that the fines are produced, speculatively. But I do get better bodies, creamier shots than I do on the niche, and I get a little bit of vibe acidity. If you're wanting something with like okay body and like no acidity the, the or, or lower acidity, the niche would probably make better espresso for you. But I do prefer the workflow on this. The fact that it has the fines knocker, again, I can't stress how much I love that thing. That I, this just takes the cake for me, for sure. I like I don't like that term niche killer, but let's be honest, James Hoffman is the one who came up with it with his DF64 video, so don't blame me. Don't shoot the messenger. But I do think this genuinely does beat it. He did the DF64 and I think he ended up saying it didn't really beat it. This one, uh, I do think so, especially with a 400 brushless DC um, motor and just the build of it all together, I think it it, it, it it does the job. So if you're getting this, um, I don't necessarily say I would see it as like an upgrade. Uh, well, for me, it would be an upgrade to a niche, but to those of you who like traditional coffee, I don't know if I'd say it's an upgrade as much as it is, you know, maybe a little bit lateral, right? I do think, I personally think it's better, but that's bias, right? Like that's my style of coffee more so. That being said, I, like I said, I think it gives creamier shots, like better bodied shots. I've just found the bodies on this much better than I have on the niche. Now this versus um, something like the P64, if you have a P64, you know, it depends on what you're wanting to do with your money. I, the P64 is a better grinder. Is it two and a half times as expensive better? No, it is absolutely not two and a half times more expensive better. So if you want to recoup like a thousand bucks, get one of these, that makes sense. But if you're looking to have substantially better coffee by switching to this, that's not gonna happen. You also don't have the potential of changing out burrs really uh, because they chose 78 millimeters. So, uh, but but let me make sure I, I get something very clearly across. These two burrs are interchangeable. You can put the turbo into this and you can put the steel into this. These two are interchangeable. You can put the turbo burrs into the S. So if you got the S, they're gonna release the turbo. They said like three weeks after something, after the end of the Kickstarter, you'll be able to get the turbos in here. So as I said, this is by far the best, the best of the lot. And I was, I was, I think I was, I gave off this impression which I did give this off, of uh, how excited I was about this grinder in that first video I linked previously. Um, because how incredible this is for filter. I was thinking, good grief, if they knocked it out of the park this hard on filter, how much is this gonna knock it out of the park? I will say I was let down by the exact quality uh, that came out of this, not because it was bad, but because I was expecting it to be as much better as this is to every filter grinder, especially under 2000. I thought it would be, you know, like this. Shouldn't have held that standard. This burr set seems to be a little bit of an anomaly between these four burr sets. The other ones all fared fine. 
but nothing was as good as this for filter. So this for espresso was nowhere near as good as this was for filter. This is just, I cannot sing its praises enough. I think if you have a small shop or a small roastery, this should be your cupping grinder, unless you can afford, you know, if you can afford like an EK-43 with brew burrs or something, go for that, but that's a few grand. This is under a thousand bucks. You get those turbo burrs, you got a robust motor, you got a cupping grinder right here, fantastic. This for espresso, it does fine. This for filter, it does fine. Um, the espresso, again, I do think is better than the niche. I think it's better than the Eureka all of them, uh, in my opinion, I do think it's better than. Um, but what, get, let me let me let me let me say that again. With the Eurekas, I think it's better marginally. Do I think most of you will tell the difference? No, I don't. And that's not to shame your taste buds or anything like that. That's to say, I've drinking more espresso in my ten years as a coffee professional than likely you'll have in your life. It's disgusting. So maybe even the last week, who knows? But. Uh, there, there is a difference there, but I don't think it's big enough difference to justify like upgrading from like a four hundred dollar Nota or something. So, we have this. Uh, great buy. If you got it, it's your first grinder, fantastic. If you're upgrading from something cheap like a you know uh, Breville Smart Grinder Pro, either of these are going to be a great option for you. They're much better multi-purpose grinders. Let me say this: they are much, much, much better multi-purpose grinders than the Niche because the Niche can't really do filter very well at all, in my opinion. I know people detract, but I would argue that most people are going to tell a massive difference between filter from this and the Niche. Even more so with this. Some with this, more so than these, well, you'll have this, which is the turbo. These are the espresso again, uh, and, and the most with this, because again, this is genuinely my second favorite, uh, maybe third, because I'm really starting to love my brew burrs and my EK-43, but that's a ridiculously uh, unobtainable uh, situation. But the only two grinders that beat this for me and my palate one, it costs forty two hundred dollars, and the other costs three thousand dollars. That's saying something, okay? I can't say the same about any of these. But these are like, th that's an anomaly. Again, it's an anomaly. It's an anomaly, 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 okay? <sighs> Finding Nemo. All right, so my thoughts. If you got these at the early Kickstarter, early bird pricing, congratulations, that is fantastic. I would not cancel it, personally, I wouldn't, even if you have another grinder, because guess what? You could probably sell it a few weeks later if you enjoy, if you don't enjoy it. And you could, If you sell it at the early bird pricing, it'll be snatched up immediately, bada bing, bada boom. It's great, it's gone. Now, if you got it at the Kickstarter price, I'd still think it's great. I don't know if I would recommend canceling it unless you're thinking you're upgrading massively over some sort of four, five, six hundred dollar grinder, in which case I don't think that's the case. And if you're, too, if you're like, oh, I'm too lazy to ever sell it or ship it, well then probably, you know, maybe cancel it because I don't really think that it's gonna, you know, blow your mind. Now, here's the big caveat. If workflow and aesthetics are your big thing and this having a smaller footprint than a lot of the competitors and having a superior workflow than a lot of the competitors, if that's for you, then definitely this is gonna do the job. Now, I can't stress enough how minute the differences of these are with competitors. I can't stress it enough. This first Gen 2 Ode or this first Gen 2 Ode, I personally think this does a little bit better than than Gen 2 Ode for my taste preferences. This does a little worse than Gen 2 Ode, and this does a little worse than Gen 2 Ode for my taste preferences. I think a lot of you, however, won't see a difference, okay? So just know that when we're talking about these grinders in this price range with these types of burrs, the differences are minimal. And that, again, is why I'm so shocked with this. They crushed it with this design. It did not translate to this turbo burr. It just didn't. This one specifically, what is in here, what is in here, Woo -hoo! hello, are fantastic, all right? I absolutely, they, they just crush, they, they crush, they crush. I'm gonna say it again, they crush. So, who loves turbo burrs? Lance loves turbo burrs. Is it true? I do, I do, I do, ooh. Okay, Kevin, Ken and Kel. So, I think that's about it. I think I answered all that I really can in this time, this short time. I think that I was much more than overt about all of it. It is, again, uncut, unfiltered, baby, so I hope that you enjoyed. I hope my energy wasn't too much, but it's because I've been trying to keep up with all these comments on all these different forums in order to ensure that I'm giving you the best help possible. My number one goal with this channel, I hope you can tell by now, is not to, you know, gain a ton of money and, and you know, run off with the loot. That's not it. Otherwise, I would quit my full-time job and I would stop consulting and I would jump in to this full time, I'd take these massive sponsoring deals. I would take money from uh, from these companies. I'd stop buying all this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm buying like 60, 60 ish percent, 70 percent of all the machines that I have for videos. I w I, why would I do that? It's because I genuinely want to help you all find the best thing. I want to be a source that you can trust, and so. 
we're just going for it, all right? So I hope that you appreciated this video. I hope it answered some of your questions if you felt I was a little bit too diluted in the previous video, but I do recommend if you haven't watched the previous video, check it out. It'll be linked at the end of this video. And uh, yeah, let me know below your thoughts if you have any further questions. And but, but before you do that, make sure you go check out the Reddit thread on uh, the subreddit Lance Hedrick, or check it out on this YouTube community. I have a community post where I'll be updating them until the Kickstarter ends, which is this week as this video is released. So around May 12th, 2023. If you see this in the future, my thoughts remain until I come through and, and if they make a different version, I'll, I'll make a different Review, I guess. I've been asked a lot of times if the 078 Turbo and if the uh, 064 Turbo can pull Espresso or if they can do Turbo shots. So I'm gonna show you what they do at their finest grind setting real quick, and then we will end. So when I said this wasn't cut, that was a lie because we are gonna have to cut right now for me to get this ready. Okay, let's do it. All right, so I'm sipping here an espresso I pulled with the 078. It can indeed grind fine enough, but you have to go to uncomfortable measures. You have to go about three clicks past a uh, touch, which is very fine and a little scary. Granted, this is with a super lightly roasted coffee, because I wanted to see if you needed a darker coffee or if you needed a whatever it needed. So I'm imagining with, with darker roasts that are really fresh, you'd be able to go right at touch and pull something like a turbo shot, something at six bar. You might be able to squeak by with nine. This is an incredibly lightly roasted coffee and it got up, it peaked at, um, I put it on a six bar profile and it overshot the six to 6.9 and it came back down to six one for the duration of the shot and that took 30 30 seconds. So I feel confident it would have gone to nine bar. That was three ticks past chirp though. So you're going very, very fine. Now again, I think if you had a, like a darker coffee and you were doing a really fresh roast, it could perhaps get the compression that you need or the puck resistance that you need in order to make something of it. But it's not a bad shot. Well, no, it's pretty bad actually. I take it back. It's a bad shot. But I didn't dial it in. I just wanted to see how far I could push it. And it can indeed do that, but you gotta go to uncomfortable measures. So the 078, the 064, they can do espresso if you are comfortable going really fine. And if you don't mind not hitting nine bar, if you like turbo shots or something like that, it can definitely go fine enough for mocha pot and the other things coarser than that. Um, but yeah, so that is that is it. That is everything. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that me being blunt and candid is something that you're appreciative of. If you're not, well, you can move on. But um, yeah, I hope to see you check out that Reddit, check out my subreddit, um, check out the Patreon below. That stuff really helps me be able to accumulate this stuff. Uh, like I said in my first video, I did pay for this one full price, not Kickstarter price, back in like January or so. These three were sent to me by Time War because you all kept che uh, chewing them out, asking them to send me the, the grinder. So I did get these for free. Um, but anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that me, um, my, my energy was not too much for you or I hope it was just enough for you. I don't know, we'll see. But all I know is I'm gonna keep windows half open. I don't even know what that means. I'm gonna shut them though because the breeze is too much. And um, anyway, that's it for me today. I hope that you brew something tasty today and cheers.